Paul Reichup, I respect your service. What are you hearing about this assault? What are your fellow service people telling you about? Well, they must be very proud of, of these uh, fellows over there, what they did. Overwhelmingly proud and impressed. And, and the military community has a tremendous reverence for everybody in JSOC, everybody in the special operations community. I mean, think about the tactical proficiency and skill it would require to enter that room, shoot a woman in the leg, and then take out bin Laden with two shots while the president's watching. The whole world, you know, will, will later find out what happened. I mean, that's an incredible amount of discipline, dedication. A whole Whole life built toward a moment like that, and to do it with, with such professionalism, and, and that's why we call them the silent professionals, the quiet professionals. They're going to do this job, and they're probably off on another mission or being debriefed already. Wow. You know, folks are already back at work in Afghanistan. I think it's a testament to, to the larger military. I mean, think about the folks who are back on patrol in Afghanistan or back on patrol in Iraq. You know, th this is a real win for our military, and it's been a rough couple of years, and our community really needed it. So it's a big boost to the morale of everyone and our families back home. You know, that raises the point, Mark, in reporting. I know reporters always try to get the information, but people on the inside in a secret mission like this have to keep that information. This ability on the part of the service people involved here, anybody that was moving paper with regard to the orders and all the kind of provisioning of these guys and all that effort, how do they keep all that secret going all the way over to, uh, to Islamabad, to the suburbs there, all that information in and out of the political service, uh, political people and the service people? Yeah, I mean, it, it is amazing um, uh, secret that has been kept uh, for months and months, as we reported, you know, today, dating back from last July when they first um, laid eyes on this courier and then ultimately tracked him to this compound. Uh, they started watching the compound 24 hours a day um, for, for months. And, and then we know that the, the uh, operation's been in the works for at least a month. And for uh, this never to leak out, it's obviously they, they, the, those that knew about it were pretty good about keeping a secret. But, uh, I mean, as secrets go, this was about the most uh, highly um, classified operation uh, perhaps in American history. You know, I keep thinking on my side, I was at the White House Correspondents' Dinner Saturday night, and there I am buzzing around, saying hello to my old pals, Jack Lew, the head of the budget, and Tom Donnan, National Security Advisor now, and of course, Bill Daly, the Chief of Staff, just talking social stuff and general politics. And all the time now, right, Mark? These guys probably knew all of this because they were in this sit room. They were in that inner circle, these guys, right? That's right. It's a poker face. And, um, and uh, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of journalists in the room. And, um, and uh, I guess everyone was, uh, was, was, was lousy about extracting any information. Well, we weren't very good spooks, were we? Anyway, here's the uh, let's take a look at the New York Times. You're reporting today on intelligence officials and how they found bin Laden. Quote, prisoners in American custody told stories of a trusted courier. The National Security Agency began intercepting telephone calls and email messages between the man's family and anyone inside Pakistan. From there, they got his full name last July. Pakistan agents working for the CIA spotted him driving his vehicle near Peshawar. When after weeks of surveillance, he drove to the sprawling compound in Abbabad, Abbottabad, American intelligence operatives felt they were on to something big, perhaps even bin Laden himself. And back to you, Mark, the role of Pakistan. The fact that the, uh, the director of intelligence, Leon Panetta, has openly now said in an interview, I believe for 60 Minutes, it's out there, but actually for Time Magazine, it's already out there, said that Pakistan was not trustworthy as an ally. Had we told them that, we would have had problems with them telling the targets, ratting out bin Laden. I mean, actually warning him. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this for years, That's a hell of a this very by deeply the way. troubled relationship between the United States and Pakistan and the sort of dysfunctional relationship the CIA has with its counterpart in Pakistan, the ISI. Uh, there had been years of frustration at where the United States at times had given intelligence to the Pakistanis, and then uh, there were suspicions that they then tipped off al-Qaeda or the Taliban or others. Um, things are bad right now in terms of the relationship, and uh, American officials publicly, as you just said, are being very blunt about, uh, about all of this. Now, now, it should be said, the Pakistani officials have vehemently denied uh, that anyone in the government had any knowledge of bin Laden's whereabouts all, this, all these many years. Well, they would have had it, uh, Paul, you can get in here. They would have had the intelligence if we gave it to them. And that's the problem. If they didn't know, yeah. and here's the question, we now look at Pakistan the way Michael Caldione looked at Fredo, his brother, you know, not to be trusted. Yeah, I wouldn't trust him. I think it makes sense to me. I mean, intelligence has got to be held very close and shared only with the people with the need to know. And, and in that part of the world, you've got to be really careful with the corruption and, and, and the rumor mill that happens out there. That, that, that would compromise a mission quickly. So, you know, it, it makes sense to me. I've been on operations where you keep information very close with, on a need-to-know basis, and I don't blame them. Okay, it's great to have you on. Thank you for your service always, Paul. Thanks for coming, yeah, Paul Reichup, and thank you, Mark Mazzetti.